This is the midweek edition of your Barbados Today Evening News Update for Wednesday, April 20. The United States Congress will hear firsthand the Caribbean's concern about correspondence banking challenges, and those hearings are likely to take place before year end. That's among the major outcomes of an intense round of talks involving CARICOM leaders and members of the Financial Services Committee of the U.S. Congress here today. The talks were jointly chaired by Prime Minister Mia Motley and the United States Congresswoman Maxine Waters, the chairwoman of the U.S. House Committee on Financial Services at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Center. At a press conference this evening, Motley said having heard the region's concern, the U.S. delegation agreed the issue should be presented to Congress. The U.S. congressional delegation has agreed that this issue is of such major import that it really now merits congressional hearings to allow us to bring not only those who were here in Barbados today, but to expose this issue to a wider audience and also to bring those other banks who may well be benefiting from our business, but who are not willing to share in the burden that may be necessary in meeting additional regulatory issues as it relates to giving us the opportunity to be beneficiaries of correspondent banking relationships. The truth is that the the, the refrain that is heard the most is that we are too small and not profitable enough for them to undertake the enhanced due diligence that may be required of them in different markets. Motley stressed that tackling these kinds of matters was imperative for the region's survival. It is important that the banking sector on both sides, um, in the U.S. and in the Caribbean, get to know each other, get to speak to each other, and start to deconstruct and reconstruct such that we understand what it is we're trying to achieve, why the regulatory um, requirements are so complex and challenging, and how we can minimize it. All of us know that the notion that you're going to ask an 18-year-old or a 20-year-old to bring a light bill to open a bank account, when years ago we would just walk into a bank and open a bank account, is today absurd. And it therefore means that too many of our citizens are remaining unbanked because of the additional burdens being placed on banks in order to be able to meet the demands and to ensure that they themselves, as one put it today, we have sometimes to de-risk customers to ensure that we as banks are not de-risked. Chair of the CARICOM Commission on the Economy, Professor Avinash Prasad, has called for urgent reform on the way countries are blacklisted. Speaking during today's opening session of the Caribbean Financial Access Roundtable, Professor Prasad said small countries in the Caribbean were being unfairly blacklisted. In fact, he said the current structure was actually encouraging money laundering as opposed to fighting it. Countries are being listed in an arbitrary way. And they are listed when they have very limited actual international financial impact or, or where the money laundering is. And as the Prime Minister said, the money launderers like it so. This process is increasing money laundering. It's telling the money launderers where to go. It's telling them don't go in these small states. And the problem is that our financial inclusiveness is now going backwards for the first time. So how are we going to change that? Because us spending more money on more processes, so we currently spend more as a percent of GDP on AML processes, than any of the countries which are the centers of, of, of money laundering. We're spending more money as a percent of GDP and getting listed. We're spending more money than those countries that should be listed. So should we spend even more money when we have very limited budgets, very limited balance sheets? We're spending, the senior people of the government is spending its time dealing with a phantom problem when they could be dealing with a real problem of poverty and inequality and climate change. The Barbados Association of Registered Persons is reporting a big response to its membership fest where members between 40 and 49 signed up to join the organization. BARP President Marilyn Rice Boyne told reporters the day went well. The traffic has been steady. Of course, we also use the online platform to sign up members as well. But the traffic this morning has been steady. We've had a very good mix of, and, and it is what we have anticipated, to have a mix of the young ones, the ones in the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and beyond, because BARP is a family. 
and in a family you do not speak about the little ones the young ones the old ones or you talk about the family so at bar we are a family and our family members are coming this morning and they are registering and they are also using the opportunity to say how they feel about bar and of course they are asking about the other products and services that we are offering namely the insurance coverage in addition to recruiting new members, BARP is also looking to expand the work of its charitable trusts, which BARP Vice President Dean Bill Miller says assists members in need. This will make a difference to older people, shut-ins, and those even who are not shut-ins um, are going to find life perhaps a little more difficult. The trust is an entity unto itself, and so they will make recommendations and I'm sure they will share them with us and um, we will see how far we can go because quality of life has changed so much just in these three years with this pandemic. Preparation for the installation of a temporary bridge at Borden St. Andrew got underway today. This follows last week's closure of the bridge after recent investigations found that the bridge was unsafe for vehicular traffic. George Vaughan, who has been a resident in the area for 50 years, says he's pleased that the work has started. He urged con pick up. He urged authorities to provide immediate access for residents so they can go about their affairs. We are left without any access, right? Unless we have to travel miles all through the dark hole area or back down to the Farley Hill where um, Baker's Junction just in order to do a trip that would normally take about um, 12 to 15 minutes now you're looking at about four, 45 minutes now one of my other main concerns is that that the people who have to get to work the bus route is horrendous horrendous transport board need to look at the bus route because a bus route that would take about 40 minutes to 45 minutes people now are taking two hours two and a half hours to get home because it's like a transport driver now have to have to be driving two routes and one route Right? I, I don't think they would be too pleased about it either. But my main thing is make sure that the people of St. Andrew have the necessary access, right? That they can go to work in a decent time. Authorities reported a major spike in COVID-19 infections on Tuesday. 674 people, 313 males and 361 females, tested positive for the viral illness from the 1,878 tests conducted by the Besta Santos Public Health Laboratory. The positive cases consist of 130 persons under the age of 18 and 544 who were 18 years and older. There were 84 people in isolation facilities, while 2,966 were in home isolation. COVID-related deaths stand at 386. There's regional and international news after this short break. More oxygen means more energy means more adventure. Cure Oxygen, natural spring water infused with more oxygen to improve your energy, immunity and performance. The next generation of hydration. Cure Oxygen, nature's ultimate water. Caribbean Cool is a refreshing juice drink that contains 100% vitamin C that you can enjoy any time of the day. It has a refreshingly awesome range of Caribbean flavors. Moby, orange, fruit punch, pineapple, sorrel, and pineapple coconut. Suitable for any occasion. Caribbean Cool. On the international front, the International Monetary Fund slashed its forecast for global economic growth by nearly a full percentage point citing Russia's war in Ukraine and warned inflation was now a clear and present danger for many countries. The IMF's projections for the world economy have worsened significantly since its last report in January when it predicted a post-pandemic recovery. The reason is clear. Global economic prospects have been severely set back, largely because of Russia's invasion of Ukraine. This crisis unfolds as the global economy has not yet fully recovered from the pandemic. From an estimated 6.1% in 2021, the IMF now says economic growth will shrink to 3.6% in 2022 and 2023. The fund says that inflation, already surging due to the pandemic, will be amplified due to war-related supply shortages. 
And its World Economic Outlook says increases in food and fuel prices could lead to social unrest. However, the IMF also said inflation for advanced economies may fall to 2.5% next year. Some economists say that should mean a change in course to prevent a devastating global recession. Uh, threatening to do what it's done many times before, which is to increase interest rates unnecessarily. And that affects the whole world because interest rates of other central banks tend to follow the Fed in the world. And that makes it more difficult uh, for developing countries to avoid crises, economic crises that push millions of people into poverty. But such as the uncertainty about the war in Ukraine, further energy sanctions on Russia, future deadly COVID variants, and more supply bottlenecks in China, the IMF says its latest predictions may be too optimistic. To coincide with the IMF spring meetings, Oxfam has released a study predicting that the pandemic and the war in Ukraine could push more than 263 million people into extreme poverty in 2022. That's news, but for the very latest, visit our website at www.barbidistoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. And sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals, as well as Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. You can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.